you, everybody. Thank you. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is running for president. These days, the son of former U.S. Attorney General and Senator RFK Sr. and nephew of President JFK is as notorious for spreading anti-vax disinformation as he is famous for his family connections. In fact, at the height of the pandemic, RFK Jr. was identified as the second most prolific poster of anti-vaccine messaging on social media, part of the so-called disinformation dozen, responsible for nearly three quarters of all vaccine hoaxes and lies online. His anti-vax status got a prominent mention in the headline or first sentence of nearly every major news report, on his announcement, which in turn raises an obvious question. Just how much coverage does a candidate like RFK Jr. deserve? And what about other fringe and long shot candidates? Joining me are Aaron O'Brien, an associate professor of political science at UMass Boston and the author and editor of Master List, Aaron Tiernan. Thank you both for being here. Aaron Tiernan, let me start with you because you're the one who sat through the, I believe, two hour kickoff speech that RFK Jr. gave the other day. What was the gist of his pitch and who showed up to listen to him make it? Um, so in his nearly two hour long meandering speech, he readily invoked his family name. Um, he made a lot of references, used some pictures as props. Um, to remind people of exactly who he was um, here in a state like Massachusetts, which, of course, um, brought us JFK and his father RFK as well. So um, he is kind of he's pitching himself as the person for the White House. He says the Ken the Kennedys need to be back in the White House, but he's not the typical Kennedy that you would imagine. Um, and his supporters were not the typical people you would think would be backing a Kennedy. We saw a lot of his supporters um, invoking words like, the, you know, uh, bod bodily autonomy in terms of vaccines and as well as personal freedoms. Um, and we also saw a lot of Republicans in the mix, more so than Democrats even. And my recollection is that the people who you talked to, a lot of them were from out of state, right? They traveled here for the announcement like RFK himself. <laughs> exactly. I only found two people from Massachusetts in the couple of dozen that I spoke to. Uh, Aaron O'Brien, as I mentioned a minute ago, there's been plenty of coverage of this kickoff and a lot of context front loaded. Here is what RFK Jr. is or what he's become over the years. Uh, given all that, do you think that the amount of attention that we in the media have paid to him so far, including here in this program, uh, does his candidacy deserve it? No, <laughs> we shouldn't be here. <laughs> we shouldn't be here. OK, why not? Um but more seriously, if his last name wasn't Kennedy, he wouldn't be covered. Um, he is a fringe candidate. He's like a lot of um, friends and family we know have gone down rabbit holes on the Internet uh, and are factually inaccurate. His running for the presidency is 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 hubris. It's it, it would be a joke if his last name wasn't Kennedy's. And that's the only reason it's getting coverage. But as Aaron said, you know, the fact that there weren't a lot of people from Massachusetts and there weren't a lot of Democrats at a Kennedy presidential announcement in Boston tells you everything you need to know. I want to get back to this question of whether or not he deserves coverage with you, Aaron O'Brien, in just a second. But first, Aaron Tiernan, uh, as, as you can both tell, I'm a little ambivalent about this because I'm not sure he <laughs> deserves coverage. And yet here we are talking about him at some length. Aaron Tiernan, when I saw the press release about RFK's announcement a few days before it happened, I'll confess that I thought, oh, man, I really do not want to have to cover that. I hope I don't get that assignment for exactly the reasons that Aaron O'Brien just mentioned. You know, it's not just vaccines and COVID. It's vaccines causing autism, allegedly his debunked claim that he's pro mm -hmm. um, helped proliferate uh, 5G and the damaging power of 5G technology, which is another spurious claim he's put out there. Bill Gates, he has conspiracy theories involving Bill Gates. Um, so I was relieved when I didn't have to cover this. For you and your colleagues at Master List, was it a no-brainer to go check it out? Or did you wrestle with, is this something we want to give attention to? And if so, how do we want to frame it? I think for us, we really wanted to get a sense of who the people were that were showing up and who the people were that would be supporting him. So that's kind of the goal that I had in mind when I went out to cover this event. Um, and, you know, it, it was interesting to see um, kind of going back to the Democrats that we did see in the crowd. One was an 18 year old kid. It would, it would be his first time voting in a presidential election. And he is from a family. He says he's a lifelong Democrat. 
Um, of, of course, this will be his first ballot cast in, in that way. But he was saying that he he was attracted to Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy Jr. because of what he's saying about bodily autonomy, Mm -hmm. um, personal freedoms. And um, he was pointing out what he saw as a hypocrisy on both sides of the Republic, you know, the Republic where the Republicans are trying to rail against abortion and all of that. He's seeing the same thing here on the Democrat side in terms of mandating vaccines during COVID. And he, he sees RFK Jr. as a candidate that's kind of striking the middle. So I found that pretty interesting. Aaron O'Brien, you said uh, a minute ago when I asked if we should be talking about RFK, no, <laughs> no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't be here. I want to pull up the findings of a poll that USA Today did with Suffolk University and, and David Paleologus, which showed what struck me as surprising support for RFK Jr. among people who supported Joe Biden in 2020. Sixty seven percent of them, according to this Suffolk and USA Today poll, are going to support Joe Biden again. 14 percent said they'd be inclined to support RFK Jr. for the Democratic nomination. Five of them said that they'd be inclined to support Marianne Williamson, who we'll talk about more just towards the end of this segment. 13 percent of them were undecided. Don't those findings suggest that, you know, while Kennedy perhaps would have no following if his name weren't Kennedy, his name is Kennedy, and he seems to have a, a constituency that could affect the way the primary process plays out. Am I overreading that? Uh, you know, I think so. The, uh, the, the, their methodology is sound, but it's a soft poll. Uh, what we know about polling is it it picks up name recognition early on. And what that says is a lot of people don't want Joe Biden to run again. And then they heard the name Kennedy. Most mass publics don't know very much, if anything, about RFK right now. So I think if we run that poll again in two weeks and a month, once he's gained some salience via this program and others, and Democrats learn more about this RFK, not the Kennedy family, I guarantee those poll numbers will go way down. I'm glad you mentioned that context. And I should add, we have a quote from David Paleologus. He he had much the same takeaway as you. I want to stress that. As he put it, in 2020, Joe Biden received more votes than any other president in U.S. history. Yet the polls tell us those same voters are open to other Democrats to wage a spirited primary. Kennedy, although a long shot at this point, starts in double digits and can't be ignored. Uh, I feel like I should note here the fact that for some supporters of President Trump, it's no secret that they see RFK Jr. as a useful stalking horse in the Democratic primary, someone that they hope is going to damage President Biden as he presumably seeks re-election, even though he hasn't made it official. Roger Stone has suggested that Trump should tap RFK Jr. as his running mate. Steve Bannon, according to Robert Costa from CBS News, spent months trying to convince Kennedy to run. And recently, Tucker Carlson ran what struck me as basically a protracted infomercial for RFK Jr. We can take a look at a little bit of that. We need to get rid of this kind of corporate control of our government. It comes from uh, this, you know, this, it, it, our, our democracy is devolving into kind of a corporate plutocracy. I, I would think that what you just said, and, I, and I'll just be honest, I agree with most of it. Um, but even if I didn't, I would think, boy, that's a really interesting thing to say. You have a coherent worldview. You've written a lot of books on these topics. You've clearly thought about it. You're not in it for the money. So don't these issues deserve a wide hearing uh, before the public entering a presidential year? I would think they would. So it sounds like he'll be able to continue airing his stance on the issues, at least on on Fox News and with Tucker Carlson. Aaron Tiernan, have you thought at all about how you may cover his candidacy moving forward? Do you think this was a one-off for Master List, or do you think that you'll be dipping back in periodically to check on his campaign and how it's going? I think if he wades back into Massachusetts, we'll definitely probably cover that. Um, and in terms of covering some of the issues that he talks about, obviously all of the things that he's saying about vaccines and linking them to autism, that, that has all been widely debunked. So we would always we would always cite that yeah. anytime we're, we're talking about an issue that has been debunked, that is misinformation. We would always be clear with our readers. And my, and my recollection from your write-up, which was the first one I read, I think, about the Kennedy kickoff, I, you know, I think you are among the many uh, media outlets that did exactly that front-loading of context or emphasis of that context in your coverage. Aaron O'Brien, we also, as, as I mentioned a minute ago, have Marianne Williamson running for president against Joe Biden. She, among other things, promised in 2020 that she was going to use the power of love 
to defeat Donald Trump. And she made for really entertaining viewing at the debates, even though she got essentially uh, no votes at all. Do you have any counsel as an academic who studies this stuff and studies the way people actually vote? Do you have any counsel for me and Aaron Tiernan and any other journalist who might be looking for it when it comes to whether and how we should cover fringe candidates in a big race like this one? You know, I'm glad I don't have your job on one side. Um, we've fallen into the electability trap sometimes that, you know, we are only going to cover candidates that are electable. And that becomes a bit tautological. They have to get attention to be electable. But a candidate like this that doesn't have any real support in the Democratic Party, and by this I mean RFK Jr., not Marion Williamson, who did okay in the debates last time, um, but someone like that who doesn't have, um, isn't breaking through, but for it wasn't their last name, the electability standard, I think it's good to question. But when, you know, he's being used as a foil, you played, you know, Tucker Carlson had him on the evening after he announced MSNBC, CNN did not. I think that's telling. We have to use our minds and realize he's being used as a foil, whether he knows it or not. So why play in to the partisan game? Your job is to cover, not to be an actor. All right. Aaron O'Brien and Aaron Tiernan, thank you both for talking this through. Thank you. Thank you.